Shepherd's Place Cheeses here on our family farm in rural North Yorkshire. I'm Caroline and this is my sister Katie. Shepherd's Place was founded by our mum Judy Bell more than 30 years ago making cheeses from our own sheep's milk. Today Katie and I now have the reins of Shepherd's Purse and we lead a team of 35 making around 300 tonnes of artisan cheese each year from the best local cow's milk, sheep's milk and water buffalo milk. In this little film we're going to take you behind the scenes at Shepherd's Purse to show you production and to do this we thought it was probably best to follow one of our cheeses through from the arrival of the milk right through to the final tasting of the cheese. It normally takes us about an hour, doesn't it, yeah, at least, easy. to do a full tour of production. But today we've only got a few minutes, so it really is going to be quite a, a, just a taste of production. But we hope that it gives you enough of an insight into all the care and attention that goes into making each and every one of our uh, award-winning cheeses. So let's get started. The milk arrives here each day, whether it's cow's milk, sheep's milk or water buffalo milk. It's then pasteurised into one of our three 2,000 litre vats. As the milk is flowing into the vats, that's when we actually do the inoculation. That's when we add the starter culture, the blue culture, penicillin roqueforte, and actually the annatto for the Harrogate blue, which is the ingredient that gives it its beautiful golden body. And shortly after the inoculation, that is when we actually add the rennet, and it is the rennet that coagulates the milk, which makes it look like set yogurt. We've got a really simple test so that we can tell when the vat's ready to cook. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. We're just testing that this is ready to cook. So we're just making a slice into the curd and then I'm lifting it up and I'm just looking for a really, really clean, it's almost like set yogurt. Really important to do it at the other end of the vat as well to make sure that it's even. So slice again and up we go. That's beautiful. Okay, so once we've done the test and we're happy with it, that's when we know that the curds are ready to be cut. So this is quite a delicate process um, and we use two different types of knives for cutting the vat and it's all done by hand. We have a vertical knife which we use slicing up and down the vat, cutting it into strips. And then we have a horizontal knife that we use which actually forms the cubes. And at this point, once you start cutting the vat, that is when we have the curds and the whey separating. Okay, so a couple of hours, two and a half hours after cut, that is when the fun begins and that's when we mould up the vats. So what happens is we are gently stirring the vats, stirring the curds in the whey. We use gravity to very quickly, but really gently, that's really important, to move the curds into the moulds, releasing excess whey by running the curds and whey mix over this drum. The curds are then guided into the moulds. The blocks of moulds are then allowed to drain off a little as they wait to be stacked at the end of the unit. From one 2,000 litre vat, we will make approximately 85 cheeses. The stacks drain off some of the excess whey. Our whey is collected daily by a local farmer who has successfully developed an anaerobic digester. The whey is used to create electricity. At the other end, the blocks of full moulds are stacked up and continue draining over the next few hours as the cheeses start to fall. Once the cheeses are moulded up and stacked into their, their individual stacks, they continue to set under their own weight. And about an hour after, they have come off the end of the filling unit, that's when we look to turn them. The turning process is really, really important because it's ensuring that we get even distribution of moisture throughout the whole cheese. We used to have to turn every single cheese by hand, but now we've got Brian. Brian is our turner and he enables us to turn full stacks of cheese in one elegant and skillful swoosh. And this is Nick who's demonstrating the art of turning with Brian.
Once the cheeses are ready to be demolded, we check the pH and once it's right, we salt. Salting for us means rubbing salt into the outside of the cheeses and allowing the cheese to absorb exactly what they need. Salt is vital for cheese making, not only for the flavour, which we can all appreciate from our home cooking, but in cheese making it plays an equally important role in preserving the amazing microbes and moulds that are at work in each individual cheese. It keeps them steady so that the cheese can remain balanced to produce the complex flavours and it also acts as a preserving agent so it's absolutely vital. Now this is where the magic really happens with blue cheese. Every single cheese is trolleyed up and they get then transported over to our ripening rooms which are at a specific temperature and humidity. A warm and moist environment is actually perfect for the development of blue mould. Penicillin rock forte needs oxygen to develop and this is why we spike our cheese. So now is the time to introduce you to our wonderful spiking machine, something that we could not make blue cheese without. I call it a little torture chamber for the cheese as it's pretty aggressive. It is actually a bespoke design for us here at Shepherd's Purse. It pierces every single cheese over 300 times. And it's this action that creates the blue veining by allowing oxygen to activate the penicillin within each cheese. It is pretty vigorous due to the nature of our cheese being soft. If it wasn't, the holes would potentially close back up. It's such a shame that you can't be with us as this is where the screen really doesn't do justice for the smell and feel of this room. And look, you can actually see the spike holes here in this cheese. Generally, the cheeses will stay within the ripening rooms for around about two weeks and it's at this stage where we actually cut into the cheese and just to see and check on the blue veining. If the blue veining is present and it's got a really good distribution, that's when it, the product moves on to the next stage and this is when the cheeses are foiled and it moves into our further ripening room. The big fridge. In here, this is where all of the blue cheeses, you can see they're wrapped in foil and this is where they ripen. It's really, really important that our cheeses mature in foil um, because it allows them to breathe just a little bit. The process of blue cheese ripening actually does generate heat in the middle of the cheese and the foil acts as a conductor, drawing the heat from the middle of the cheese to the outside, which actually helps with the maturation process. After the two weeks in the ripening room and the cheeses come into this store, they would then generally spend another further eight to ten weeks in here before they're then selected for customers. We have a team of dedicated cutters, accurately selecting and cutting the cheese, first into discs and then into wedges. To do this, Accurate cutting with artisan cheese takes skill and a lot of precision. Finally, every single wedge is wrapped and labelled. We make 100 gram pieces, 180 gram pieces, 750 gram half moons, all the way up to a full 1.5 kilo truckle. Every batch is graded before it's ready for our team to cut and wrap. We grade against aroma, visual appearance, texture, and most importantly, the taste. As long as the cheese passes the grade, we approve the batch for release. The batch is then available for our team to select to cut fresh for all orders. Every batch we release should be capable of winning international awards. The final stage is packing up the cheese, ready to send out or for our customers to collect direct from the farm. So let's head back upstairs and taste some. So uh, we're back and we have the final product ready to taste, the best bit. This is a particularly special cheese uh, for both Caroline and I because it was launched in 2012, which was the year that Caroline joined the company and the year that mum handed the reins over to us. So uh, very, very special all round. So it's looking really good here. We've left it out for a little period of time for it to warm up, which is the best thing to do with your, um, with most cheeses actually, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? absolutely. Warm them up to room temperature. So let's taste. Mm. Creamy. 
Really, a bit of bite. Lovely. And a bit of peppery kick mm. in the end. Really beautiful, creamy blue cheese, exactly as it should be. Thank you so much for joining us here at the farm. If you have any questions at all, it was just a sneak peek into our production. So if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us either directly or through our social media and we'll try and answer any questions that you have. Thank you so much for joining us here on the farm and we hope to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.